How is a German town that survived World War II torn apart by shoes, yes, shoes, just a few years later? This is the story of how two brothers would go on to change the world's shoe game forever in nine minutes. It all started back at the beginning of the 20th century, and the Dossler family have just welcomed the last two children into their brood. The brothers were seemingly born into their destiny, as their quiet town of Herzogenrausch's main industry was shoemaking. While young Audi was pushed into a baking apprenticeship by his father before he was even a teenager, he was truly passionate about all things sports and how to improve one's athletic performance. But before he could really create a career for himself, Audi was drafted into the war in 1918. He would join Rudi and their older brother Fritz, who had been fighting since the war began. Upon his return in 1919, Audi quickly began formulating a new athletic shoe business. He built shoes out of whatever materials he could find, and even created his own bike-powered leather milling machine to use without electricity. Sports clubs in the area would receive samples of the shoes Audi was designing. The coaches and athletes could test them out for themselves, and the orders began rolling in. Rudy joined in on the fun in 1923, and on July 1st, 1924, the pair officially registered their company as Gebrüder Dossler Schuhfabrik, or Dossler Brothers Shoe Manufacturers. Together, they made a killer team. Audi, the quiet brother, was the mastermind behind the shoes, constantly tinkering and redesigning to make each shoe better and better, while Rudy was outspoken and charming, a born salesman with a mind for business. And so the duo embarked on their dream and began producing 50 pairs of athletic shoes a day to be used for soccer and track. And by 1928, they found their shoes at their first Olympic Games, where runner Lina Rodke not only won the goal for 800 meters in Amsterdam, but broke a world record while wearing Gebrüder Dossler shoes. The following year, the brothers registered their first patents. But just four years later, the world would change forever. In January 1933, Adolf Hitler became the Chancellor of Germany, and on May 1st of that same year, Audi, Rudi, and their older brother Fritz all joined the Nazi party. Unbeknownst to the brothers, this single act would eventually lead to the end of their partnership and brotherhood. But it was an event in 1936 that marks the moment that many believe made the brothers. At the Berlin Olympics, black American Jesse Owens made history by winning four gold medals, setting three world records and breaking or equaling nine Olympic records. And he did all that while wearing Audi and Rudy's Gebrüder Dossler shoes. Owens wasn't the only athlete wearing Dossler shoes while competing. The brothers ultimately won seven gold medals, five silver and bronze medals, and broke at least five records with their shoes. But their newly found global fame and success was dampened by the brothers' deteriorating personal relationship as well as the looming threat of war. And on September 1st, 1939, Germany invaded Poland, thus beginning World War II and sending the Dossler brothers on a very different path. In December 1940, Audi was ordered to report for duty to the Air Force, but he was dismissed shortly after in February 1941 as he was deemed necessary for the operation of Gebrüder Dossler. In 1943, Rudi was drafted into the army, but would desert his post two years later. He was questioned, arrested, imprisoned by the Gestapo, and was transferred to Dachau when he was released to walk home. But his freedom was short-lived as he was arrested by American troops in July to review his involvement with the Nazi party. He was told that his arrest was triggered by a denunciation which he wholeheartedly believed came from Audi. Rudy was held in an internment camp for an entire year before he was released. Audi was not exempt from investigations into his own involvement with the Nazi party. After the war ended, he was originally labeled as a Belos de Terre by the Denazification Committee in July 1946. This title meant that Audi was deemed an active participant in the Nazi party and profited from its actions based on the fact that he had a party membership and had worked with the Hitler Youth since 1935. Audi quickly defended himself, stating that his involvement with the Nazi youth was solely based on his interest in sports and that he regularly worked with sports clubs of different political alignments prior to the war. He was adamant about avoiding any sort of political rally and continued sourcing material from Jewish business owners even after it became unfavorable to do so. One business owner even claimed that Audi hid him and his family on his own property after he warned him that he was to be arrested by the Gestapo. 
With this information, Audi's classification had switched to that of a lesser degree. He was now considered a minder belosteter, which still carried with it a sizable fine and a two-year probation in which he could not own or operate his business. Audi appealed with the help of a lawyer, but his brother Rudy, just released from the internment camp, told the denazification committee that Audi had organized the production of tank parts by their factory himself and that Audi held political speeches at the factory, a claim that Audi's wife Keita would refute, claiming that Rudy had in fact organized the speeches. Eventually, Audi was essentially cleared and labeled Mitläufer, a common label that stated that they went along with the regime without any meaningful contributions and he was once again able to run the business. But the damage was done, and the brothers finally decided to go their separate ways. Rudy and his family moved out and headed to the other side of town across the Aurash River, which naturally divided the town in two. He took over a small factory owned by the brothers and the rest of their assets were split, including patents, equipment, and even employees who were allowed to choose which brother they joined. Those who worked in sales and admin sided with the salesman Rudy, while those assembling the shoes sided with the designer Audi. However, the splitting of assets made business for both brothers very difficult. While Audi had all the technicians to create and build the shoes, he had no one to sell them. Rudy had the staff to sell all the inventory, but no inventory to speak of without the technicians. By April 1948, Gebrüder Dossler was no more. Audi would go on to form Audidas, a contraction of his first and last names in March 1949. While Rudy would try something similar with Rude, he eventually went with Puma, registering it on October 1st, 1948. The town of Hetzogenrosch was split down the middle. The brotherly split did not just impact the Dossler family. After the divide, the families in the town held allegiance to either Audidas or Puma. Their loyalty was usually denoted by which side of the Aurangsh River they lived, on Rudy's side or Audi's side. The town is also sometimes referred to as the town of broken necks, or residents are known as bent necks, because locals will look at each other's shoes to determine whether or not to speak to someone. Puma went on to dominate in the track and field world, while Adidas arguably became the biggest athletic shoe in the world, all successes undoubtedly fueled by the brothers' not-so-friendly rivalry. Rudy died in 1974 of lung cancer at the age of 76, and Adolf followed four years later at the age of 78. Their graves are in the town churchyard on either end of the cemetery, representing their unending hatred. There were rumors, however, that there was a secret meeting between the brothers before their deaths in the 1970s. Some believe they kept this meeting a secret because they thought people knowing they had met would be bad for business. A 1981 New York Times article stated, only recently has the feud cooled enough so that their company representatives may exchange greetings at sports events, signaling that this fight outlived both men. But the times are changing. Today, both businesses are no longer family owned. In 2004, Rudy's grandson, Frank, took a job as the head of legal for Adidas, having previously worked for Puma. And in 2009, the two companies held a soccer game to finally bury the hatchet in this decades-long feud. No brand came out the victor as they played on mixed teams. Kids in the area have been seen repping one brand on their feet and another on their bag at the same time. And in a 2013 interview, the mayor of herzog Roche, Dr. Germain Hocker, stated, I wear both, of course, always both. I had a football game recently and I had two different shoes on, proving that the brothers could work side by side after all.